Imagine a world where you couldn't just tap your card or click a button to buy something. A world where trading a cow for a sack of grain was the norm. Sounds wild, right? Well, that's how it all started. The history of money is the development over time of systems for the exchange, storage, and measurement of wealth. Money is a means of fulfilling these functions indirectly and in general rather than directly, as with barter. Money may take a physical form as in coins and notes or may exist as a written or electronic account. It may have intrinsic value, commodity money, or be legally exchangeable for something with intrinsic value, representative money, or only have nominal value, fiat money. Welcome to another mind-blowing episode of Mysteries Debunked. Today we're exploring the interesting world of money, from its humble beginnings to its mind-bending digital future. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. Your support keeps this channel going, and trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. Now imagine for a moment you're living in the Stone Age. You've just spent days crafting the perfect stone axe, and you're feeling pretty proud of yourself. But here's the thing. You're also starving, and unless you can find someone willing to trade some woolly mammoth steaks for your axe, you're out of luck. Welcome to the world of barter, folks, where every transaction is like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube while blindfolded and riding a unicycle. Barter was the original economic system, and it worked, sort of. Picture a prehistoric farmer trying to trade his excess grain for a new pair of sandals. He'd have to find a sandal maker who not only needed grain, but also happened to have a pair of sandals in the farmer's size. Talk about a coincidence of wants. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, except the needle is wearing tiny shoes and the haystack is hungry. But as human societies grew more complex, people realized they needed a better system. Enter commodity money, the first step in our journey towards modern currency. Imagine a world where salt was as valuable as gold. No, I'm not talking about a weird alternate universe where french fries are currency, though that does sound delicious. In many ancient societies, salt was actually used as money. Why? Because everyone needed it, it was relatively scarce, and it didn't spoil. Plus, if your money got bland, you could always sprinkle some on your food. Other popular forms of commodity money included shells, beads, and even cattle. Yes, you heard that right. Cows were cash. Imagine trying to fit that in your wallet. Sorry, I can't pay for my coffee. I left my cow at home. But jokes aside, these early forms of money solved a crucial problem. They provided a standard unit of value that everyone could agree on. As civilizations advanced, so did their money. Around 1100 BCE, the Chinese began creating miniature replicas of tools cast in bronze. These tiny spades, knives, and hoes were essentially the world's first coins. It's like they invented a prehistoric version of Monopoly money, except you could actually buy things with it. Meanwhile, in Lydia, modern-day Turkey, King Alyats minted the first official currency in 600 BCE. These coins were made of electrum, a naturally occurring alloy of gold and silver. The invention of coins was a game-changer. They were portable, durable, and their value was guaranteed by the government. Plus, they made a satisfying clink sound when you dropped them into your purse. The original cash register, cha-ching, coins quickly spread across the ancient world, facilitating trade and economic growth. It's like the ancient equivalent of inventing the smartphone. Suddenly, everyone wanted one, but coins had their drawbacks. They were heavy for one thing. Imagine trying to buy a house with a cartload of gold coins. You'd need biceps like Hercules just to make the down payment. Plus, carrying around large amounts of precious metals made you a target for thieves. It was like walking around with a sign saying, Rob me, I'm rich. Enter the next big innovation in money, paper currency. The Chinese, always ahead of the curve, started using paper money around 700 CE. But it wasn't until the 11th century that it really took off. The Song Dynasty issued the first government-backed paper currency. And suddenly, money became a lot lighter and easier to carry around. It was like going from lugging around a desktop computer to slipping a smartphone in your pocket. Meanwhile, in Europe, goldsmiths were inadvertently laying the groundwork for modern banking. People would deposit their gold with goldsmiths for safekeeping and receive paper receipts in return. These receipts could be used to reclaim the gold, but people soon realized it was easier to just trade the receipts themselves. Voila! Paper money was born in the West, but here's where things get really interesting. These goldsmiths noticed that people rarely came to withdraw all their gold at once. So they started lending out some of the deposited gold, charging interest on the loans. And just like that, fractional reserve banking was born. It's like the goldsmiths invented a financial magic trick. They could lend out more money than they actually had. This system of paper money and banking spread rapidly across Europe and eventually the world. By the 18th and 19th centuries, most countries had their own national currencies backed by gold or silver, the famous gold standard. It was like each country had its own financial superhero, with powers granted by precious metals. 
But the gold standard had its problems. Countries could only print as much money as they had gold to back it up. This led to periods of deflation when economies grew faster than the gold supply. Imagine trying to grow a garden, but you're only allowed to use as much water as you can carry in a teacup. Not exactly ideal for growth. The solution? Fiat currency. Money that isn't backed by anything except the full faith and credit of the issuing government. The United States officially abandoned the gold standard in 1971, and other countries followed suit. Suddenly money wasn't tied to any physical commodity. It was like cutting the strings on a puppet. Money was free to dance to its own tune. This shift to fiat currency marked a fundamental change in how we think about money. It's no longer a physical thing with intrinsic value, but rather a shared belief system. We all agree that a piece of paper with a dead president's face on it is worth something. And that belief makes it so. It's like we're all playing a massive game of pretend, except the game determines whether we can afford rent this month. But the story of money doesn't end there. Oh no, we're just getting to the good part. Enter the digital age, where money becomes even more abstract. Credit cards invented in the 1950s allowed people to make purchases without carrying cash. It was like having a magic wand that could summon goods and services with a simple swipe. Then came online banking and electronic transfers. Suddenly you could move large sums of money across the globe with a few clicks of a mouse. Money became invisible, zipping through cyberspace like data in the matrix. Show me the money became less about piles of cash and more about numbers on a screen. But the real revolution came in 2009 with the invention of Bitcoin, created by the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto, who could be a person, a group, or for all we know, a highly intelligent dolphin. Bitcoin introduced the world to cryptocurrency. It's like someone looked at regular money and thought, you know what this needs? More math and a dash of cyberpunk aesthetic. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies represent a radical departure from traditional money. They're decentralized, meaning no government or central bank controls them. They use complex cryptography to secure transactions and control the creation of new units. It's like if you combined a Rubik's Cube, a computer, and a piggy bank, the result would be something like cryptocurrency. The potential of cryptocurrencies is enormous. They could revolutionize international transactions, making them faster and cheaper. They could provide financial services to the unbanked populations of the world. They could even change the very nature of economic relationships. Imagine a world where smart contracts automatically execute when certain conditions are met, or where microtransactions allow for new business models we can't even conceive of yet. But cryptocurrencies also face significant challenges. Their value can be highly volatile. One day you're rich enough to buy a yacht, the next day you can barely afford a rubber ducky. There are concerns about their use in illegal activities. And let's not forget the environmental impact of crypto mining, which uses enough electricity to power a small country. It's like trying to save the world and accidentally setting it on fire in the process. As we wrap up our journey through the history of money from cowrie shells to crypto wallets, one thing becomes clear. Money is whatever we collectively decide it is. It's a tool, a symbol, a shared illusion that shapes our world in profound ways. And as technology continues to advance, who knows what form money will take in the future? Maybe we'll all be paying for things with our thoughts or trading in interdimensional energy credits. The possibilities are as endless as human imagination. So what do you think? Will cryptocurrencies replace traditional money? Or will we invent something even more mind-bending? Let us know in the comments below. And there you have it, folks. The epic saga of money from cowrie shells to crypto. We've come a long way from swapping goats for grain, but the fundamental idea remains the same finding a way to exchange value that we can all agree on. Before we wrap up, here's your quiz. If you could design the perfect form of money, what would it look like? Drop your ideas in the comments below. Who knows, you might just invent the next big thing in finance. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Your support is worth more than all the cowrie shells in the sea to us here at Mysteries Debunked. Until next time, keep your coins shiny, your bills crisp, and your crypto wallets secure. This is Mysteries Debunked, signing off!